3.5, the equation of a straight line in the forms y equals mx plus c and y minus y1 equals mx minus x1. This is part of my ultimate revision guide to further maths GCSE and uh, the coordinate geometry section. This button here will take you back to the index of coordinate geometry and any exam questions I've done on this topic I will put links to down here in the practice question section. Okay, things we should know. Uh, we should be able to work out the gradient and intercepts with the axes of a given equation or graph. So the gradient and intercepts, if we've got it in the y equals mx plus c form, this is the best form for equations of lines. Um, to be honest, I very rarely use this form at all. Um, I, I wouldn't teach this form, although a lot, I know quite a few teachers do, because you can do everything you need to do with this. Um, the gradient and intercepts, so the gradient is the m, the intercept is the c. So if you can get into the form where y is on its own and it's equal to something times x plus c, or minus a number, plus or minus a number, then you have everything you need to know to do that first bit. The intercept is the C, the gradient is the M. Work out the equation of the line using the gradient and a known point on the line. That's where this formula is fairly useful. It's a slightly quicker version of doing it than if you use the Y equals MX plus C. But I don't think it's worth learning this just to do that one specific case. I, th I feel that that's a bit of a crutch that people use um, that's unnecessary. You can do it with using this. If you know the gradient, you know what M is, and you know a point on the line, then you can use uh, y equals mx plus c like this. If you knew the gradient was 2, then you knew y equals 2x plus c, and you've got given a point, so you're given a point for x and a point for y, say the point 1, 3. Then you can work out what c is by just replacing y with 3 and x with 1, and then you would know that c would have to be 1. And then you've got your, your equation line, y equals 2x plus 1. So you can you can do everything you need to need to do with this equation. You don't need this equation, but it can be a little bit quicker because when you use that equation, you would have y minus three because that'd be your y one coordinate equals the gradient, which is two times x minus uh, one in there, and then you could rearrange that to get the whatever format you wanted. Um, but anyway, I'll, I'll show more of that when we do these equations down here. Work out the equation of a line using two points on the line. Um, if you know two points on the line, then you can work out the gradients, which we've covered in, in previous uh, sections of this topic, this uh, section of coordinate geometry. Um, and once you have uh, the gradient again, and you have a point, it's the same as this one. Once you know the gradient, so you, you essentially you're, you're reducing it to this case because you work out the gradient and you know at least one point. In fact, you've got two points. You can then find the equation of the line in the same way as I just showed you there. Uh, give the equation in a particular form when instructed to do so. So changing the form into this, it's usually y equals mx plus c form. This is not really a form somebody would ask an equation to be given to them in. Um, it might be the case that you're asked to do it in a form where you've got everything on the left hand side equal to zero. Um, but that's just uh, rearranging an equation, it's not really coordinate geometry. Once you've got an equation, it's just rearranging. Um, work out the coordinates of points of intersection of two lines. Well, that's just simultaneous equations. If you've got two equations and you want to find where they cross, you just you just solve them simultaneously. Um, any correct form will be acceptable if a particular form is not asked for. So it doesn't matter how you write your answer. So you could put it in y equals something x plus something, or you could have it all on one side. You could have x plus y equals something, so long as it's um, equivalent to the to the sort of standard equation, then that's fine. Okay, so we've got three example questions here. I'm just going to run through them. If you want to have a go at those on your own before I go through them, that would uh, help you to understand what I'm about to tell you. Okay, let's have a look at the first one. So a straight line has this equation, work out the gradient of the line. So whenever you're trying to deal with the equation of the line, you need, well, I would I would say always to rearrange it into the form y equals mx plus c. So rearranging this, if we take the 3x over to the right-hand side, we get 2y equals 8 minus 3x. And I want to divide by the 2 to get 1 on its own. So we divide by 2, we get 4 minus um, 3 over 2x. You can put one and a half there, but I prefer to have it in the um, as a fraction, top heavy or improper if you like. Um, so y equals minus 3 over 2x plus 4 is in the y equals mx plus c format. So the gradient of that line is the minus 3 over 2, so that's just minus 3 over 2. That's perfectly fine to leave it like that. 
Don't feel like you have to change that to a decimal or to one and a half. Minus three over two is perfectly fine for the gradient. Uh, work out the coordinates of where the line intersects the y axis at uh, the x axis. So the thing about this is when you're crossing the x axis, so this is your x axis here, this is where y equals zero. So the y coordinate of the x axis is always zero. So you have like five, zero, ten, zero, and so on. So all we've got to do is solve this where y equals zero. So we have uh, what value makes that true? So if we take this over to the left hand side, we get um, 3 over 2x equals 4. Um, so that's 1.5x equals 4. So we need to divide by 1.5, or if you like, we can times by the 2 and divide by 3. So x equals times by 2 is 8, divided by 3 gives us 8 thirds. So the coordinate where it intersects the x axis is 8 thirds. 0. Work out the coordinates where the line intersects the y axis. So the y axis, the one going up, the thing about the y axis is the x coordinate 0 here. So we have like 0, 3, 0, 5, 0, 10. So we just make the x coordinate 0. So we have y equals minus 3 over 2 times 0 plus 4. So this is the value here. So the intercept is the coordinate where it crosses the y-axis. So this is always given by this number. When you've got it in the y equals something x plus something format, whatever this, if it's plus or minus, whatever that number is with the sign is your coordinate of um, where it crosses the y-axis. So 0, 4 would be the coordinate there. Work out the equation of the straight line that passes through minus 2, 3 and 1, 5. So this is like um, when I was given the list of things earlier, this was the second one, which we can reduce to one where, where we've got the gradient and a point. But we've got two points here. So we, first of all, we need to find the gradient. So um, just think about where the points are. So minus 2, 3, if I do that on the left, because that's to the left, and 1, 5. So minus 2, 3, and 1, 5. Working out the gradients, work out how far across we go and how far up we go. We're going from minus 2 to 1, which is 3. And we're going up from 3 to 5, which is 2. So the gradient, the steepness of the line, is going to be how far we go up for 1 across. So the gradient is going to be 2 divided by 3. So for 1 across, we have to divide by 3. And 2 divided by 3 is 2 thirds. So our equation is y equals 2 thirds of x plus a number. Now we can use either of these two points. I'm going to use this one because it... Um, it has one in it, so it makes it a little bit easier to do the multiplication. Um, and we just put those two points. This is our x-coordinate, this is our y-coordinate. We replace that into this equation, and it must be true. This must, The y-coordinate must be equal to two-thirds of the x-coordinate plus a number. So we can find out the missing number that way. So 5 equals two-thirds times 1, which is just two-thirds, plus c. So c must be 4 and one-third. So we take away two-thirds from 5, we get 4 and one-third. So y equals 2 thirds x plus 4 and 1 third. Um, I'll just, just point out another format for um, equations. Not always the, the prettiest things having thirds, um, having fractions like this. So sometimes you might be asked to put it in a form where you have um, a y equals bx plus c, where a, b and c are all whole numbers. If you had to do that, you just multiply 3 by 3. You don't have to do that in this question, but if you did, um, if you multiply 3 by 3, you end up with 3y equals 2x, and 4 and 1 third is 13 thirds, so that's plus 13. So that would be another slightly neater way of writing this equation. Work out the coordinates of the point of intersection of the lines. So here and here, so this is just simultaneous equations. We've got this, y equals this and y equals that. So we can just say they're equal. So 2x minus 1 equals 7 minus 3x. And um, then we just have to solve that. So we take, add the 3x to get 5x minus 1 equals 7. Um, from there, we need to add the 1 to get 5x equals 8. And quite a lot of these questions are going to end up being um, fractions or decimals, not nice whole numbers. So I'm going to leave it as 8 fifths. That's a, a simplified uh, improper fraction as you're going to get. Um, if you know x is 8 fifths, then you can work out y by using either of these two equations. So I'm going to just use the first one. So y equals 2 lots of x, which is 8 fifths, minus 1. 
So y equals 16 fifths minus 1, and 1 is 5 fifths, so that's 11 fifths. Um, you can leave it like that if you want, or you can change them into mixed numbers or decimals, whatever you, whatever you like to do. But I'm just going to leave it as, so the point of the intersection is 8 fifths and 11 fifths. Okay, so that was quite a sort of whistle-stop tour of y equals mx plus c, all the things you can do with it. Like I said, you can use this, and if you've been taught this, use it where you need to. Um, but uh, you can do everything with just this one equation. You don't need this at all.